Good morning. 8.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Saturday, December 3rd, 2022. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. As today, Michigan plays in the Big Ten Championship. I'll be downtown with my brother. He's got a work party at Motor City Casino down in Detroit. So me and Julie, my mom's going to come here this early afternoon. She's going to end up staying here with my son. And me and Julie are going to go downtown for a night. And spend the night at... Spending the night downtown at MGM, but we'll be staying at St. Regis. So that'll be a, a nice night to get away. Me and Julie haven't been out in a while. So look forward to that. I'll try to do an update tonight as well, but I'm going to do a couple during the day so that you guys can get a good flow. We need to pay attention today with the XRP lawsuit. Brad Garlinghouse said he's fighting for all of crypto. And like I've said from the beginning, I don't believe that means that a settlement can happen. The only way a settlement can happen with XRP, in my personal and humble opinion, and this is just coming from the XRP future millionaire, you might disagree, and that is your prerogative. You don't have to agree with me, but what I personally believe with the uh, SEC versus Ripple XRP lawsuit is Brad Garlinghouse and anybody associated with Ripple XRP, they're not going to settle unless the SEC says that Ripple XRP did not, and it, did not sell as a, you know, as a, they're not a security. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear they're not a security. And anything short of that, they're not going to settle. Garling House has said exactly that. And they said they're fighting for all of crypto. So if they get a settlement and pay a fine, that doesn't help all of crypto. So everybody perpetrating this bullshit settlement narrative without the greater game or the greater good involved, it just doesn't make any sense. Again, it makes us look like dopes in the XRP community as influencers not you as holders but the influencers who push out and perpetrate this bullshit narrative that a settlement can even be considered ripple xrp brad garlinghouse chris larson's in the bunch they're not looking for a settlement they're looking for a way to have some clarity for crypto it doesn't give you clarity for crypto if only ripple pays a fine and then they're on their merry way then the rest of them have to go through the same thing so we'll get into the technical analysis on XRP, but first I want to get into this because it's very important. Helps spin the narrative. XRP lawsuit. Ripple files final submission against SEC. Lawyer says fighting for crypto industry. Ripple and defendants in the XRP lawsuit have played straight with the court, stated Stuart Alderodi, general counsel of Ripple. Ripple, Bradley Garlinghouse, and Chris Larson defendants filed their redacted reply to the U.S. SEC's opposition to Ripple's motion for summary judgment in the XRP lawsuit. The motion mentions the recent decision in LBRY versus SEC case and asked the court to grant the defendants the summary judgment. Ripple on the right side of justice and XRP lawsuits. Stuart Alderodi, general counsel of Ripple in a tweet, stated that after two long years, they are proud of the defense they have mounted in the name of the entire crypto industry. He added that the defendants in the XRP lawsuit have played straight with the court. However, it's difficult to say what the adversary is doing. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO at Ripple, affirmed with general counsel... He mentioned that they are fighting to get clear regulations for the entire industry. However, he congratulated Team Ripple for getting to this point. He highlighted that the defendants stood strong and withstood the SEC's onslaught. Meanwhile, he looks forward to being on the right side of justice in the XRP lawsuit. Earlier, CoinGap reported that the XRP law lawyer had hinted Ripple is ready with a counter-argument over its massive XRP holdings. Will the court grant Ripple's summary judgment? As per Ripple's motion... The, commission, the commission's opposition briefs confirms that Ripple's motion for summary judgment should be granted. The SEC is unable to show any offered or even sale of XRP much less from 2013 to 2020, it alleges. The commission failed to present that XRP was an offer or sale of an investment contract and why it is a security under federal securities law. John Deaton, Amicus Correa in the XRP lawsuit mentioned that Ripple has defended itself against the SEC's massive overreach he added that Ripple has maintained to be in line with the law, i.e. something that Judge also mentioned. So that's what I wanted to read to you because that's going on very, very out in the open and in front for crypto. As Brad Garlinghouse came out and said that this is a fight for more than just Ripple XRP, it's for all of crypto. Now let's get into the charts. XRP is down 0.76%. It is... Maintain a hold over the 0.388 level, which is very critical because if you are below the 388, you do have a chance chance to break down. 
But as of right now, you can see we have made it over this uptrending support line and it's at the 392 level. We're holding this as support right now. If that's the case, we can come back up here all the way to the 426 level and then possibly the 433 in this pattern. This is part of the formation. If we were to break down this weekend, we could have a nice little breakdown um, on a thinly traded weekend. What do I think is going to happen? It starts now. It starts right now in the 30-minute time frame. If we're going to have a bullish push this weekend, we need to start holding this 3.9 level. At minimum, we need to hold 3.92. And then start making our way back up. And I'll show you exactly what that would look like on the Perpetual Futures chart. As we're dead in the middle, but we have created a pattern formation. And I can show you what's created out of the side here. And this is just in the past day of trading or so. We've created something like that for the uptrend. And then these become very, very, very easy to measure because if you break through any of these points support or resistance, you will know a current pattern setup. And this is exactly what we're looking at right now. And some people say it's elementary, basic, whatever. Sometimes elementary and basic is exactly what's needed. We've got the rest of the charts. You can put all the indicators you want, but if you don't understand the basic pattern formation, you're screwed. All the indicators in the world aren't going to help you if you don't understand the minuscule and the um, the small time frame formations in the pattern. We can all see the bear flag, but what's happening in the last couple days, the last week, the current formation, the extended formation, you can even bring this all the way back here and see how this has kind of played true all the way from the back end here. So it's not just in the immediate short term, but you've had this pattern formation. I just prefer to do it like this so we can see the shorter extended period makes it look a little bit easier to read instead of going all the way back so if you're asking me at worst we're trying to hold this weekend 388 like i said 388 is that key level and if we can't hold 388 we're gonna have a nice drop down this weekend but if we can hold it we'll be fine and you can see this shows it too and we're trying to work our way back up to the 426 and then the 433 approximately. 435 because of how far across we are in the area. So that's what I'm looking at for XRP. I think that's the clearest way right now to just show on the chart is XRP is kind of in its own little area right now. See, and you can see how important this is. No matter how I judge this, this is such an important area. So watch that. Now XLM. In our, we're trying to look at this as possible bear flag, which could be a head on a head and shoulders pattern very quickly. And we're going to know if that's the ending of the pattern if we continue to be rejected by 0889. If we can get over this, then maybe we can make a run up to 99. But 088 is a very big, 0889 is a very big resistance level for Stellar Lumens, for XLM. And on this chart, if we were to break down, underneath support would be all the way down at 7.5. And if you broke 9.9, you've got 10.6 over the top. So Oxalum is stuck in a very, very narrow range right now. So I'm running a descending triangle on this bear flag. So this is what we're looking at with no volume. And is this a bear flag? And I pointed right to it. So that's what we're going to watch, see how it develops here in the next day or two. And then DGB. DGB is still making its way up after it broke out of the bear flag. We're trying to get up to 0080. We haven't got up there quite yet. We came very close to 00794. But we just haven't ha been able to have that greater push over. Where's my other DGB chart? The other DGB chart's much better. Assuming I can, if I kept it up here. Ah, here it is. So, I talked about this pivot right here to pull up. And it's so far pulling up. It came up, but can it break all the way up here? I don't know. If we can hold 747, that's your bullish support. So if you're watching, 747 is your bullish support. We're within a little channel here. I mean, you could say we're in a descending triangle as well. But in the shorter time frame, I'm trying to measure this area right here. We continuously hit the support, downtrending support. This resistance ends up breaking back through every time when we break this line. So that's what we're doing, and we're having like a little channel coming back up here right now. So these are not typically very bullish unless we can find some volume, but that is a very lackluster volume performance. And then Bitcoin down 131 points or 0.77% at 16,962. We're still in this channel. We're in a descending triangle. 
And you can see exactly what's going on. We need to break out past 17,438 to push up to 18,067. Then ultimately maybe push up to 19,854. Underneath support, we've got major at 16,400. And then underneath that, we've got about 15,400. But if we look at all three of the Bitcoin or the Bitcoin charts, you can see this uptrending resistance tells the major story. This is a bearish line. If you can't get above that 17,124, this pattern remains bearish in the bull flag or in the bear flag. Yes, do we have a bull flag in the hourly or the four hourly that you could kind of say is forming? Maybe. But it's pulled down. If this pulls down any farther, this will be just a head and shoulders pattern. So let's we'll see if we continue to get rejected there. That is a major rejection line. And then if we get rejected there, we'll come back to the bear flag that we broke out of, and that's right down at 16,573. We're not that far from it right now, only 400 points, but all three of those charts can fluently work together, just like my XRP, XLM, and DDE charts. Hope you enjoyed today's update. As always, today's update was sponsored by the dedicated, loyal, and very generous members of Tom's Army. The 216 members of Tom's Army pay $9.99 a month. And they ensure that we have no paid promotions, no paid advertising of any kind. There's no special interest and nobody can buy me out so that I advertise for them or tell the charts the way they want them to be seen. I'm not going to lie to you and dictate the market in a direction it's not going to go just so I can get paid some extra big bucks. I refuse to do that. So once again, thank you to the members of Tom's Army who sponsor this with the generosity during times of inflation. Spend their hard-earned $9.99 a month. To support this show and belong to Tom's Army. You also get the exclusive telegram that has 240 something people in here right now, 245. It's a group of people that understand crypto, that understand the XRP, and who will have the same mindset as you, and you won't have to go look for people. And the worst thing is to be alone when you're trying to hunt for crypto. And then if you want to join me on BitGot, that's the place I suggest the most because I think it's the most, it's the easiest place to trade on BitGot. So there's my link. Um, if you want to join me there, there's no spot fees. You don't need to do a KYC, but you may need a VPN in the USA. If you're already in the USA, continue trading. It's not going to affect you. But I believe that things are going to get better here in the USA. They just released their numbers, and they're fantastic. They released their reserves. They're fantastic. I want to speak to that real quick. So if you want to know why I trust BitGet, not only because it's the easiest user-friendly, I believe, with futures and then also spot trade, their, their platform is spectacular. So Bitcoin reserves, they have 8,730 Bitcoin in their wallet. Bitcoin or BitGet users only own 1,204 of those Bitcoin. They have 202% in reserve. So that's a 725% reserve. USDT, they have 202%. So users have two, they have twice as much as users' funds. And with Ethereum, 6,533 Ethereum are owned by users, but they have over 12,100, 186% on reserves. So their proof of reserves are looking very strong. Much more than 100% on hand. They have 725% in Bitcoin compared to user funds. They have 202% USDT compared to user funds. And they have 186% in Ethereum compared to user funds. Not too shabby. So that should help you feel a little more safe with BitGet. Join my partner link, join me on BitCat, because that is the number one to me on as far as user ability. If you have to use a VPN in the USA, I'm sorry. I don't have to because I was already signed up. But I've gotten word that they're gonna reverse that and it's gonna be it's not that it's not available in the USA. It's just because of regulations in the USA, they're covering their own ass. If you join Tom's Army, click on the XRP Future Millionaire. You also get the special emoji badge of me being abducted by aliens in month one. Um and then you can donate XRP, cash at Venmo, and then obviously you can join me on Maxi as well. And you don't need a VPN there, but BitCat to me is the easiest and most transparent when you're on it. Maxi is very easy as well. And then Uphold is my most trusted, but spot fees are very, very high. Hashtag the FUD stops here. Make sure to share this to friends, for your friends and family who haven't seen this before or just somebody else who hasn't seen my content so that they can stay away from the jabronis.